Welcome to the program. This is the AM News. Let's get right into it. The Ghana Cocoa Board has clashed with mining firm Megop Mining Limited over alleged attempt to destroy over 4,308 hectares of cocoa farms in search of gold in five communities in the Ntumwa in the Aja South District, uh, in Ntumwa in Wambieja South District, rather, of the Ashanti region. Presently, the mining company is prospecting for gold on 120 hectares of cocoa farm, majority of which is under rehabilitation by Cocoa Board. Now, according to the regulator, the farms are being destroyed without proper authorization from Cocoa Board as required by law, an allegation refuted by the mining company. Nanaya Aljima visited the area and has come through with this report. Prospecting for gold is already underway in communities like Brahabebome, Impoyem, and Wagadugu in the Nkaria Cocoa District, Apoyem and Bronsako are among areas targeted for mining activities. According to some farmers, the mining company has already taken measurements of their farms, proposing some compensation. After measuring the farm, they pegged the price at 10,000 cities per acre. They told us the land has been given to them by government, so if we do not take the money, they will forcefully mine the area. Presently, Megop Mining Limited has commenced works on 169 hectares of land destroying some economic trees. Public Relations Officer of Megop Mining, Richard Jesse, explains the extent of destruction caused so far. So now we are in the exploration stage. We are now coming to development stage before you start the mining. So we are not destroying the crops as it, it has been portrayed. No, nothing at all. But sometimes when you, when you pass this road to come to this area, definitely, definitely, one or two crops may be affected. Then we pay for it. Government approved price. You understand? Cocoa production in the country has been on decline since 2021, dropping from 1 million metric tons to 480,000 metric tons in 2024. In April 2022, the Ghana Cocoa Board revealed over 19,000 hectares of cocoa farms had been destroyed as a result of illegal gold mining activities, a figure likely to increase by close of this year. Statistics from the Cocoa Board have revealed the 4,300 hectares of cocoa farm targeted for mining produces cocoa beans worth 316 million cities annually. Head of Anti-Illegal Mining Unit of Cocoa Board, Professor Michael Quartin, reveals the company failed to seek appropriate authorization from the Cocoa Board before embarking on the activity. When you go to the regulation of um, Mineral Commission, the uh, um, Mineral Mining Act 703, if you read the section 18, subsection 1 and 2, it tells you that mining companies are supposed to contact you know, um, bodies that regulate, you know, that farm, whether um, cocoa or whatever. So they are evaluating, you know, that aspect of their law, their own law. And mining companies are taking advantage of the system, destroying our cocoa everywhere. Um, yes, but what is happening? From here, we are going to take action and ensure that, you know, uh, they are brought to the law. I mean, you know, Cocoa Board, now we are now using the Economic Plan Protection Act. Uh, that is what we are using to protect the cocoa. In protecting cocoa farms from the threats of illegal mining, the Cocoa Board is strengthening partnership with the Minerals Commission. Professor Quartin again. For, we are planning to ensure that uh, whenever there's any uh, concession to be given, uh, Cocoa Board will be involved so that when it comes to the inspection, our officers will be part of the inspectorate division to ensure that uh, really whatever concession will be given, there wouldn't be any cocoa farm or tree affected. For Joy News, Nanaya Ojima, Nkare. 
The Ghana Revenue Authority is educating clients on its online portal for tax payment. The exercise is being used to sensitize individuals, employees and companies on the need to promptly file their monthly tax, re tax returns for accountability. Chief Revenue Officer at the Cape Coast South Office of the GRA, Kenneth Victor's Kofi Tobi, says the appreciation of people in the payment of taxes is low, hence the need to embark on this education. Tax and then good governance. The aim is to educate the taxpayers about their obligations. And uh, normally what we do is that uh, we go around or we invite them and then educate them on uh, filing. For example, at the end of the year and by the close of April, you need to file your returns. If you are not able to file or if you don't file your returns, the system generates penalty. And the penalty is the day, the end of the December, if you don't file your returns, that day is 500. And each day that the return is not filed is 10 cities. So we are advising the public, both individuals and companies, to file their returns. Because if you apply for tax clearance certificate and you have not filed the returns, the system will not accept you. And if you, you, you go ahead to file to the system, the system will generate penalty. And because of that, a lot of taxpayers are having problems. So what we are trying to do is to go around and educate them to file their returns. For example, we have uh, the individuals. The individuals, your year of assessment is, we call it a calendar year from 1st or January to December 31st. You have to file it. Employees, they have to file it. So I am announcing to the, all the employees, I mean, wherever you are, please file your returns. Otherwise, when you need something like tax clearance certificate, it will be difficult for you. You have to pay a penalty before the system clears you. Then companies too. There are some companies also, their uh, a, a year of assessment is January to December. But there are some too, their year of assessment, we call it a, a, a accounting year, from maybe a, a June to July. So when it ends at June, count four months and file. So that is the company. Normally, this thing is the, is the multinationals that have their uh, 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 accounting year or their year of assessment different from their calendar year. Because they are multinationals, they, have, uh, uh, they normally prepare group accounts. So they always want their year of assessment to correspond with their uh, uh, parent companies. So that is what we are trying to do now to file, everybody should file his returns. Otherwise, when you go or you apply, even online, the system will reject you. You have to file it. That's the purpose of uh, this. Filing of returns in Cape Coast South, uh, as of now, our, our rate of filing is around between 75 to 80%. In other stories, outgoing Upper West Regional Minister Dr. Hafiz bin Sali has, been, has appealed to the leadership of the various Muslim sects in the country to eschew all forms of fundamentalism and extremism in order not to allow agents of destruction to infiltrate their ranks. Rafiq Salam had the rest of the story. I think all the present on Tuesday brought on end this year's fasting in the Holy Month of Ramadan in the country during this period. The Muslims did not only abstain from taking food or drinking water, but also abstain from all forms of fossil devices and nefarious activities. Both the young and the old, including persons who have mobility challenges, were wheeled to the judiciary class of schools guardians for the two rakat open congregational prayer. 
Apa was regional missionary of the Ahmadiyya movement in Islam. Molvi Muzaffar Chaudhry Masur Ahmed led a prayer. He followed it up with the Eid sermon where he spoke about the importance of the holy month of Ramadan. So if we are able to follow the teachings of the Holy Quran, we can see that there will be peace in the whole world. So that was the message from our worldwide Khalifa. So I emphasize on this point that if we are going to take step by step the teachings of the Holy Quran in our practical life, then we can achieve our month of Ramadan's exercise and we can really celebrate the Eid, Eid al-Fitr. Turning to electoral violence, Mulvi Muzaffar Mashur Ahmed noted that Islam is a peaceful religion and so too are its followers. He is however deeply worried to the Maru when names of some Muslims was up on issues in electoral violence giving the religion a bad name. He therefore called on Muslim youth in the country not to allow themselves to be used as tools to foment trouble during the electioneering period. We Muslims should be the peaceful Muslims to create the peace into the country. So when I hear this thing that Muslims, they are spreading the hate or the violence in the country, I'm so sorry. But if we are able to implement the teachings of the Holy Quran in our practical lives, I think that there will be peace. And our Muslim people, when they will also listen to me, I'm hopeful that they can be very peaceful and they will also guide to the people to remain peaceful for the country. Our going opposition minister, Dr. Hafiz bin Sali, was also present at the garden. His grandfather, Imam bin Sali, laid the foundation stone for the Amumbe movement in the Wale enclave some 90 years ago. Dr. bin Sali appealed to the leadership of the Muslim Ummah in the country to rescue religious fundamentalism and extremism in order not to allow agents of destruction to infiltrate their ranks. Due to religious differences, developments in some parts of West Africa's sub-region and other parts of Africa, notably Burkina Faso, Nigeria, and Mali, are unfortunate and regrettable. I want to use this opportunity to appeal to our Muslim leaders to eschew fundamentalism and not allow agents of destruction to infiltrate our ranks. Dr. Bin Sali is moving to the Upper East region in a mini reshuffle announced by President Ikufu Adu. As you may be aware, the President of the Republic, His Excellency Nana Abdodanko Ikufu Adu, has moved me to the Upper East region as regional minister. And now, the Cultivating New Frontiers in Agriculture group has started processes to implement its five-year pro cashew development program in the West African cashew sector. Country representative of the program, Eric Yenobotir, says this will improve the income of cashew growers in the implementing areas by providing them with alternative sources of income. Anna Sabit has more. The five-year USDA West Africa Pro Cashew Development Program was implemented by cultivating new frontiers in Africa and with the sole aim of increasing farmers' productivity and efficiency and boosting the cashew trade by improving harvest and post-harvest techniques as well as supplying chain linkages between farmers and agro foods companies in the five intervention countries. The program, which is in its fifth and final year, is today highlighting the outcomes and impacts of the activities undertaken over the past five years. Eric Heno Butcher is the Ghana country representative of the USDA West Africa Pro Cashew Project. Uh, the West Africa Pro Cashew Project is working in five countries that's Ghana, Benin, Burkina, Cote d'Ivoire, and Nigeria. And for we, those in Ghana, the mandate is to support to increase cashew production and then improve quality. And we work through the Department of Agriculture, with the support of Ministry of Agric and other collaborating partners like 3CDA 3, 3 and then the Cocoa Research Institute of Ghana. The project also seeks to support these cashew farmers through renovation and rehabilitation of, of their farms to boost quality and productivity. The purpose is to make sure that cashew farmers are able to get more yield and then also get more quality 
and also more money. All is to alleviate poverty and also make sure farmers have a good life and well-being for they themselves and their family. Eric also noted that these beneficiary farmers were also taken through other alternative farming methods which includes intercropping and beekeeping. This, he said, was to help provide them with other sorts of funds to complement seasons where they fail to have good cashew harvests. We are also coming to supplement and complement what the government of Ghana is doing. That's what ProCashew is here to support. And so we take farmers through renovation and rehabilitation. When we say renovation and rehabilitation, we mean that there are old cashew farms and which are no more fruiting. And so we have to bring in new techniques of how to prune and give better qualities to these trees to start uh, fruiting again. So these are some of the trainings we give. Kipo Mimuna works with the Ministry of Food and Agriculture in the Sola Tuna Kalba district. She has been working with the Pro Cashew project since its implementation five years ago. Mimuna tells me the project has been beneficial to farmers within her district, adding that she has equally benefited from the various trainings implemented by Pro Cashew. This project has been beneficial to me especially because I have learned a lot on cashew production from Pro Cashew, from new establishment, how to land preparation to post-harvest and uh, marketing. I've learned a lot and I think the farmers are also benefiting from, from it. Another beneficiary of the project, a farmer in the Bole Bamboy district, narrates how the new project helped in the prevention of bushfires in the area. I'm very thankful to Prokashu because they have already bring a lot of impact to my life and to other farmers within that area. Because Prokashu has helped our farms this year to have low a fire burn outage. I can say that most of our farms couldn't burn this year because of the training they have given to us. Municipal Director of Agriculture for Tanon North, Gofred Ezena, on his part, lauded the project which he says helped in the growth of cashew in the district, but was quick to appeal for its continuity to enable more farmers benefit from the project. I think once pro cashew is in, it has really helped most of um, all, most of my families and I, I, would, I, would, I would like it to continue which is going to help my farmers in the district. Also present at the event are key stakeholders in the cashew value chain including representatives from the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. Anna Sabit, Joy News, Sunyane. For final story in this bulletin, the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, with support from its partners, has expanded its health center at Tongo Gemini in the South Dai district of the Volta region. The expansion works saw the provision of an equipped maternity and intensive care unit for babies to augment maternal health care to reduce mortality in the area. There's more in this following report. The Evangelical Presbyterian Health Center is one of the few facilities serving the South Dine District and the Volta region. On the daily, about 100 clients visit the facility, which has limited space to operate, leading to congestion. The structure contains an open patient department, wards, a maternity unit, a pharmacy, a lab, and store, among others. Right Reverend Lieutenant Colonel Bliss Divine Agbeko retired is the moderator of the EP Church. Community here, we have a large population. Uh, they are at the river bank. They are farming in those places. They are fishermen, and uh, they come over to to trade, uh, do market activities, and also attend healthcare. And so, this is the major healthcare facility in the area that they can, you know, come to for help. The block you see right in front of us, where I'm pointing my hand, is the general healthcare facility where we do clinics for the people and we have few beds less than 20 beds over there and there they do delivery they do the general uh, physician work kind of thing but we realize that the rate at which uh, they give birth over here we need to give them a separate ward in partnership with the Presbyterian Church USC, a spacious maternity unit has been constructed under the organization's Ghana Maternity Ward Partnership Project. The Rotary Club also supported in finishing the facility. And so with the help of PC USA uh, members, they contributed money to help us put up a new facility. 
that can take about 20 women in labor at a time. And then they have also helped us to equip the facility with all that is, ne is necessary in the maternity ward. I mean, even children born before time, they have the incubators to take care. Uh, they have all the complements over there so that they can serve the community. And uh, it's a way of uh, loading, of taking the load of this common building over here that does everything. So now we have a separate ward that is able to do it with the, the full facility. And uh, we thank God and we thank our, our neighbors, our brethren for this. Uh, we hope to expand further. Uh, the com Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News, Tongo, Germany. And that's it for the AM News, but there's still more to come. Now we get into the conversation, starting with the newspaper review. Dr. Michael Ayamga is our guest for that segment. Join us.